Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love in all of us command. With glowing hearts we see thee rise, the true north strong and free. From far and wide, O oh Canada, we stand on guard for thee. God, keep our land glorious and free. Oh Canada, we stand on guard for thee. O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Good morning. Thank you, Maddie McGregor of Mount Albert for that beautiful rendition of O Canada. I'm Councillor Tara Roy D. Clementi, and on behalf of the Town of East Gwillimbury, I am pleased to welcome you to our virtual Remembrance Day service. This year, we commemorate the 75th anniversary of the end of World War II. The town hosts a Remembrance Day service annually, and while we would normally have many of you here today on the front lawn here at the Civic Center, due to COVID-19, we had to explore an alternate way in which to share our Remembrance Day service with our community. Thankfully, we have this option of reaching out virtually. Today, from our homes, our office, or even from school, Together, we will honor the brave men and women who fought for our freedom. Our service will begin with greetings from our MP, York Simcoe, Scott Davidson. This morning on Remembrance Day, Canadians honor and remember the men and women who served and sacrificed for our country. This year, as we all grapple with the wide-ranging impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic, we reflect on how much we value the small, everyday aspects of life and are reminded that everything in society, the ordinary things we take for granted, can change and be lost in a moment. Our country saw this kind of change and upheaval when the First World War broke out on August 14, 1914. On that fateful day, brave Canadians from coast to coast to coast left their everyday life, said goodbye to their families, and answered the call to war. All of a sudden, Canadian society was turned on its head. The entire country was dedicated to supporting the war effort on the home front, while young Canadian men found themselves transplanted from their quiet homes, places like Sharon, Jackson's Point, Mount Albert, and West Gwillimbury, into the mud of the trenches and the brutal fighting of the Somme, Vimy Ridge, and Yeeps. In short order, what was routine? What was normal changed for everyone. This is reflected in the accounts of those who lived it. Percy Kingley, born in Picton, Ontario, was a private in the 5th Battalion of the 1st Canadian Division. In a letter dated June 26, 1915, Kingsley wrote plainly of the brutality of war, which was in start struck to the contrast of the life he left behind in Canada. He writes, well, mother, I must have lived a charmed life. At least I am a very lucky fellow to be here at all. On the morning of April 22nd, as you know, the great Canadian-German attack begun. The Canadian division was cut off, so we extended our right angles of our line and blocked the German advance. It was here that our boys were gassed badly. It was here that 8,000 of us, 8,000, held 60,000 Germans for 22 hours without support and under the most terrific shell fire during this war. It was marvelous how everyone lived under it. Well, mother, to make a long story short, we were there for five days and nights without food, and when relieved, some of our boys could hardly walk. Our losses were terrible, and the sights I saw I shall never forget. To give you some idea of the slaughter, our Brigade went through, went in with over 5,000 strong and came out with only 1,200 in number. 
We were relieved when we came back through Ypres, when the Germans were shelling it, and the destruction was something awful. There were dead men, women, children, and soldiers lying all over the city, and I don't think there was a house in the town that had not been ruined. The war is still raging, the same as other mother, and I think it will last at least for another year. We'll remember you when I'm smoking those cigarettes. Well, bye-bye. Yours truly, Percy. Percy Kingsley's experience in the front line of the Great War demonstrates the bravery of the Canadian forces, as well as the horrific conditions they fought in. But our country is what it is today through their service and sacrifice. And the service and sacrifice of others in the Second World War, Korea and Afghanistan, and numerous other engagements and conflicts around the world and at home. We owe an immense debt to our veterans, especially those who made the ultimate sacrifice. There is no doubt that their efforts had secure a better, more peaceful world today and establish Canada as an unrivaled beacon of hope, good governance and prosperity. Even in the face of immense challenges like the pandemic we are grappling with today. Today we honour those who served and sacrificed for our country. I offer my deep gratitude on behalf of the citizens of the Dominion of Canada. We will remember them. Thank you, MP Davidson. We will now hear from our MPP, York Simcoe, Caroline Mulrooney. Good morning. I'm honoured to be here today to be part of East Gwillimbury's annual Remembrance Day service. First and foremost, I want to thank the heroes who made the ultimate sacrifice for our nation. We will forever be indebted to these courageous men and women. As we mark this occasion, I remind you to ask yourself, what does being Canadian mean to you? To me, being a Canadian means that I am privileged enough to be a citizen of a country that values our rights, our freedoms, and our way of life all of which we are guaranteed in large part by the brave women and men who have served this country. Throughout our history, our soldiers have stood tirelessly to protect Canadian values while also protecting citizens around the world as peacekeepers, disaster relief specialists, emergency responders and crisis managers. A person cannot help but feel awed by the enormity of what our Canadian Armed Forces and our Royal Canadian Mounted Police have encountered, and the perseverance that they have shown for peace and hope for others. Each and every day, these troops display their selflessness, their courage, and their dedication. Our veterans ran to places that most of us would have run away from. They sacrificed their lives to fight for our freedom. They made our nation into what it is today, strong, free, and proud. As we reflect on the significance of Remembrance Day, our hearts break for the families of soldiers that did not return home. How do we repay the sacrifice that our soldiers have made? I don't have an answer, but what I do know is that at the very least, we can honor them by remembering them not just one day a year, but every day. For those who are currently serving, we are proud and grateful to them for their bravery, for leaving home and ensuring peace around the world. Know that we pray for you and your families. Years ago, former Prime Minister John Diefenbaker stated beautifully what being Canadian meant to him. And I think his words capture what most Canadians believe. He wrote, I am Canadian, free to speak without fear, free to worship in my own way, free to stand for what I think is right, free to oppose what I believe is wrong, and free to choose those who shall govern my country. I'd like to extend my sincere gratitude to the organizers of East Gwillimbury's annual Remembrance Day service. This has been a difficult year to come together, 
but we have been able to, through the ceremony today, to come together and reflect and offer our respect to our veterans and armed forces. And this is something that we will all cherish. To our veterans and present service members on behalf of the province of Ontario and the residents of York Simcoe, thank you. Good morning. Thank you for joining us here today for our virtual 2020 Remembrance Day ceremony. Each year we gather here in front of the Civic Centre to acknowledge and honour the men and women who fought for our freedoms and helped shape the country we live in today. This year our ceremony looks a little bit different. However, our purpose is the same, to remember the valour and sacrifice of thousands of Canadians. It is the responsibility of each of us to carry the torch for our veterans, to remember they risked their lives for our freedom. This year, 2020, marks the 75th anniversary of the end of the Second World War. On August 15, 1945, people around Canada gathered to celebrate the end of six long years of war. More than one million Canadians fought for our freedoms, and of these, more than 45,000 soldiers gave their lives, and another 55,000 were wounded. I have personal memories of how families were impacted by war. My father fought in World War II. Recently, my mom gave me an envelope she had in the back of a drawer. I'd never seen it before. It was clear to me that it was very old. It was my father's Canadian Army Soldier Service and Paybook. Written in his handwritten notes were many notations. Joined 17842 as a private. 1942 became a rifleman. That's less than 15 days. 19842 had a vaccination. 4742 had a tooth pulled. 12243 made a new will. 4243 joined the Pioneer Platoon. 10345 became a sapper. He had small arms training several times, the last being interesting, spring of 45. His discharge certificate is dated December 1st, 1945, with a note on the bottom that he was to return to civil life. He never spoke about the war, but when ever in our home a war movie was on the TV, he would quietly get up from his chair and change the channel. He passed away 14 years ago, and while he never talked about his war days, this little book told me everything that he didn't tell me about his five years in the Army. His personal stories and the memories that we have are important for us to share, to put a face to the name of many who fought for our freedoms and for those who never came home. Today we come together in the 11th hour of the 11th day in the 11th month to remember and honour their lives. Today, wherever you are, wear a poppy proud to honour those who chose with pride to defend our country and protect our future. 2020 looks different, but our act of remembrance is still the same. We must continue to remember and honour our Canadian citizens who fought for our country in the many wars of the past and present. We won't forget. We will remember. Thank you. I would ask Councillor Crone to come forward at this time, please. Thank you. In Flanders Fields. In Flanders Fields, the poppies blow that mark our place, and in the sky, the lark still bravely singing, fly. Scarce heard amid the guns below, we are the dead, short days ago. 
We lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you from failing hands we throw. The torch be yours to hold it high, if ye break faith with us who die. We shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. Councillor Morton will now call the roll of honor. We will never forget our vet veterans from World War I, Private Sherman Brock, Private Robert Buckles, Private Arthur Case, and Private Ernest Cousins, Private Richard Doan, and Private Walter English, Lieutenant Frank Wesley Glover, Private Chester Hammett, Private Roy Hollinghead, Honorary Captain Reverend Oscar D. Irwin, Corporal Andrew Knowles, Private Wellington Lane, Private Radford Shooter Lane, Private Len Leonard Mahan, Private Edward Morgan, Private Sidney Owens, Sergeant Frederick Nathaniel Pearson, Zapper Lyle Arnold Stokes, Private Frederick Taylor, and Private William Thorgood. We will never forget our soldiers from World War II, Private Charles Bonnell, Private Clifford Bosworth, Lance Corporal Donald Clark, Gunner Clifford Fairbarn, Lance Corporal James Fountain, Flight Sergeant Clifford Johnson, Corporal Cavanaugh, Corporal Kenneth Mason, Private Pollock, Trooper Archie Riley, Flying Officer Donald B. Stewart, Warrant Council 2, Jack Vincent Wilby. We shall always remember. <laughs>
will now recite the act of remembrance. At the end, the response is, we will remember them. They shall not grow old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. Representing the Dominion of Canada, MP Scott Davidson. Representing the province of Ontario, MPP Caroline Mulrooney. Representing the town of East Gwillimbury, Mayor Virginia Haxon. Representing the Mount Auburn District Legion Branch 382, Kathy Morton, President of the Mount Auburn District Legion. Indigenous Veterans, Kathy Morton, President, Mount Albert and District Legion. Representing York Regional Police, Inspector Peter Casey. Representing East Gwillimbury Emergency Services, Chief Robert McKenzie. A wreath will be laid on behalf of the following. Knights of Columbus, Holland Landing District Lions Club, Mount Albert District Lions Club, Holland Landing Chapter, Chapter of the IODE, East Gwillimbury Chamber of Commerce, Sharon Temple Historical Museum, the East Gwillimbury Historical Society, Community Living Newmarket Aurora, War Amps Operations Legacy by Audrey Donahue, North Union CCRC, River Drive Park Community Center, the Golden Anchor Seniors Club, St. Elizabeth Seton's Women's Guild. All wreaths, including our people's wreath, will remain around the Cenotaph at the Civic Center today should you wish to come by and view them. And now, I'm pleased to call forward Reverend Siddiqui of the Sharon Hope United Church to deliver the blessing. Receive the blessing. Go with the love that is willing to give its life for its friends. 
go with a commitment to fostering a peaceful and just society. May the blessings of God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and always. Amen. Maddie McGregor will once again share her voice with us for Amazing Grace, followed by God Save the Queen. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. T'was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. When we've been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. God save our gracious Queen, God save our noble Queen, God save the Queen. Send her victorious, happy and glorious, long to reign over us. God save the Queen. Thank you again, Maddie, for sharing your beautiful voice with us. This concludes our Remembrance Day service, and again, I thank you for joining us and for honoring our soldiers, past and present. Wreaths, including our people's wreaths, will remain around the Cenotaph at the Civic Center for public visiting. Please be respectful of social distancing and wait for others to leave before approaching the wreaths. Please be healthy, safe, and kind. <laughs>